We've been doing this for a dumbass long. It can't stop, won't stop. Those whole elements thing is too overrated. There are like 20,000 elements, but it's all about the mindset that we put it into to make it our own stuff. Herzlich willkommen zu einer neuen Folge Back to Tape Unseen. Falls ihr den Film Back to Tape bisher noch nicht gesehen habt, könnt ihr das weiterhin machen. Hier findet ihr den Link. Das ganze Werk für euch, es liegt mir sehr am Herzen, deswegen freue ich mich, wenn ihr es schaut und mir auch Feedback dazu gebt. Heute geht die Reise nach Amsterdam. Ich habe Edson Sabayo besucht. Er hat als DJ seine Karriere im Hip-Hop angefangen. Bekannt und groß geworden ist er aber zusammen mit Kollegen, als er die Marke Pata gegründet hat. Ein Sneaker-Store, der sich für jeden, der sich mit Hip-Hop-Mode beschäftigt, ein Must ist. Doch nicht nur die großen Marken werden da verkauft, sondern die Marke selber ist durch ihr soziales Engagement groß und bekannt geworden. Ich habe mich mit ihm darüber unterhalten, was Hip-Hop-Kultur für ihn wirklich bedeutet. Viel Spaß. Hip-Hop was, was big already since the 80s in, in, in Amsterdam. You've got to understand Amsterdam was one of the first cities in Europe who adopted Hip-Hop. Uh, so after London and England, you know, Holland came right after because the Dutch are known to do stuff very quick. If you, for a simple example, like all the big ass house DJs, etc., they probably have a crate full of hip hop. They still have the Scooby D's, the Coogee Raps or whatever. They still have that. Basically, it's like all these segments of, of, of music or whatever, they put it through a mixer and then you get your own lane, you get your own stuff. And that is what hip-hop is basically to me. Would you say that style and fashion is, is the fifth element or maybe one of the most important no, elements I mean the like, culture? I mean like those whole elements thing is, I think it's too overrated, I think. Uh, yeah, of course, but you know what I mean. I know, I know. It's a yeah. very important part of the culture. Yeah, no, that, I mean, there's a lot of important part of the culture. I think it's more the attitude, which is the most important part. Some people that I know are so fucking hip hop, like they know all the shit, but they don't care about the fashion. It's, it's just the mentality. And hip hop especially, you know, you got all these wide range of elements. If you like, let's say, art movies, or you like art, How we approach it is on a hip hop way. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Right. It's like it's like you have this you're like wow, it's just like you know what I'm saying? But it's not one of the art or art like you know, like museums, it's not really one of those elements. So I'm I'm trying to say that this whole element thing, to me personally, is too overrated. It's more like there is so there are like 20,000 elements, and but it's all about the mindset that we put it into to make it our own stuff. At my house, we had like this little uh, boom box or whatever, and I had one bell drive turntable. So not a, a, not a uh, uh, Technics, but 1200, but just like a bell drive. And I used to make cut and paste tapes, so like stop, a, a play, stop tape, and then I had the, the, uh, the tape and I had the beat, and then in the beat I was mixing another record. That's how I started learning how to mix, and I was pretty okay with it. Bought a little bit of records, and then I went on and went on, and then from 92 on, Uh, I was playing at this uh, uh, skate shop, it's called Vibes, it was in Amsterdam, it was on the single 10. It was the same place that Rhythm Import was first, Rhythm Import was on the single 10. Rhythm Import was a record store, big fucking huge was that in that period. Rhythm Import, you had, you had Atalos, you had Buddhists, you had a free record shop, whatever. But uh, Vibes came there, it was a skate shop, and they had turntables. I came in at one point and I was playing on Saturdays. They had turntables, the headphones, and I was playing, that was nice. And my boy Clyde was working there, and he was like, yo, you were kind of nice. Yo, I got this, I got this. I know this bar, this new bar, it's called the Dival. So we're gonna go later. Um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a bar. You want to play? I'm gonna introduce you to the owner and then let's make it happen. So we went over there, and then the guy's like, ah, cool. Then I came on a Friday, I never forget, I came on a Friday, I just prepared a set or whatever, pack, came in, but I forgot my headphone. I didn't know. But the guy, <laughs> you know, and the guy was like, the, the place was packed, and the place was like this, like boom to the end maybe, you will yeah. see it. Fucking dark, it was nice, like dark. And I had no headphones, so the guy went outside, 
And he got me a headphone. And then I started playing. It was I the night, whatever, you know, it's my first like gecko. And I always told him like, if I ever gonna be making it or whatever, I will always, cause you went out to get me my headphone. It's like, all right. And still up to day, I'm still playing at that spot. <laughs> yeah, no, no, it's dope. And but the best part about that is that uh, from that era, it's like um, a lot of creativity was going on. So we was hanging out with a lot, with a lot of people, a lot of gr a big group, and all the kids in that group were already entrepreneurs, but we didn't know. Yeah, really, that's right. So we was like hanging with each other, hanging out, and we didn't know that. And then. All of a sudden, some people did a business over there, other did this and that, and was this one guy was also a photographer, he was also hanging out with us, did, did pictures. And it was just fun, just kicking and having fun. And it's one of the things with hip-hop also, and you know, the attitude is also have fun with it. Not to, not to, you can be serious, of course, but you have to be fun, have to have fun with it. Because it is fun. Because at the end of the day, it is a hobby that turned into, look at you. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's a hobby and now it's your business. That's the most funniest shit ever. The best thing it's that the ever happened. It's the best thing happen. Because you have to understand, a lot of people in your class, probably back in the days, they're not having a job, a wife, a, you know, working nine to five, uh, having a, but they don't have fun. They're just in this, in their, in the their strict thing, yeah. what they need to do. you just like, you don't know what your day is going to be. Yeah. And it's going to be, but that makes it interesting life. Really? Understand. And that's the mentality, what I'm trying to talk it's the hip-hop shit. How was it for you that your hobby turned into business? We're trying to be as independent as long, as for long as, so we're still independent. I think we don't, one of the few companies in the world or whatever, yeah. that is a black-owned, community-driven, uh, independent company. So that means it's our own money. So we can do whatever the fuck we want to do. If you want to work with these people, we work with that people. If you want to do this, we do this. And the good thing is that you never had the problems to, to, to sell things? That no, we, we already are like a community-driven uh, company. So that means, let's say in the 90s, what I told you, we were at the cafe. Yeah. So everybody around us wanted to be with us, but we all were into entrepreneurs already. Yeah, okay, cool. So we, created, we created a scene. We was, we was the scene. Like, it was a, it was a thing. Yeah. You know, we did also parties. I mean, remember we had we had a party at the Matzo called Stupid Fresh. It was like five friends of us did parties, but we also are fans. So that means that we look something. We don't look at it as a business model yet. We just look at it. Okay, I'm 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 going to go out. What do I want when I go out? I need to be treated right. So that means everybody's on the guest list. Everybody on the guest list. When you was waiting outside, we had umbrellas. You know, so really? if it was raining, like boom, we had, we didn't make any money. The little money that we made, we just put it back in the thing. We made shirts, just to, you know, and we had the best DJ, we just rocking it. And that was not, it was, that, it was crazy that period, man. And then we came up with ideas and it was, it was fun to do and it still is fun to do. Same with here with Pata. When we started, it was the two of us, me and G. Now we have 30 people, we have a whole business. Of course, it was a learning, curve and a learning thing to do it, but you have to do it in practice. Ten of the ideas that we have, nine of them are shit. <laughs> but, That's but, but you need to learn, otherwise you cannot learn. You only learn if you go on your mouth, if you go flat on your back. I was DJing, G was MCing, and we was with Fab Beats, right? So we traveled to New York a lot. And then one day, in, I think in 98 or something, my brother was in um, New York. Normally when you used to go to New York in the 90s, you would stay somewhere, then you go to Manhattan, back and forth, you, you buy, you went to your spots, whatever. He found out that, because he, he was staying in Jamaica Ave in Queens, and that's way up. That's Queens, that's up. He came back from Manhattan shopping right, with sneakers. Then kids were like, yo, why you always go that way? Yo, around the block, there's the Coliseum. What are you talking about? So he went with them. He called me on that spot, like, it was no cell phone, but so he called me like two days later or whatever. He's like, yo, I got a new spot. Save up some money, we're gonna go. So we went, like four or five months later. I never seen that. And I understand now, because it was like, 
let's say like a coffee shop, like, you know, a little bit, but like a tiny, and it was 20 shops, 20 shops. And then, of course, the American system is so fucked up that you have the segregation shit. So any hood, neighborhood, black neighborhood, you will have sneaker shops. You will have the gold shops, you have the hair shops, you have the car shops, and then if you go to a Jewish neighborhood, you don't have that. So I used to, we used to go all, we used to go Jamaica Ave, we go, used to go Fordham Road, we used to go to Fulton. So I knew already what I, and then when we came back with sneakers, we had shit that nobody else had. So we was walking was down the, the thing, yeah, we right. was walking down the block. And that's the reason why everybody, <laughs> even from Germany, went to Amsterdam <laughs> to get to new shit, right? Yeah. So that's why we had like, we had shit. But then when we opened up our time, so we had no account, but we knew already where we had to go. So when we went, we went, let's say, for we went to Fulton, right? Fulton Street, Albee Square Mall, uh, downtown Brooklyn, near Juniors. Their street was like full with shops. Later on, I found out, of course, that it was owned by two or three guys. One guy is a Pakistani dude, his name is Manny. Dude, turban, everything. We came to his shop one day, right? And I saw a sneaker, an Air Force One, that was only made in Paris at Courier, Courier had the best, the Courier Air Force One Brown, whatever, No, Went in, I said like, look, go get your boss. They're like, what the fuck is this guy? What the fuck does he want? You know what I'm saying? It's like, yo, my boss, nah, nah. I'm like, yo, go get your boss, I can talk with him, I can get him 100 pairs. Waited, we waited for like four hours, finally he came, Manny, boom, big guy, boom, turban, it's like, yo, what's up? Boom, boom, we talk, I'm like, look, I can get you 100 pairs, but if I get you 100 pairs, we want to have 200 pairs of these and these and these. He's like, all right, let's see what these guys have. So we went back. We went to Courier in Paris. Yeah. I knew a friend of mine. Uh, he hooked it up, a boy from Stockholm. We hooked it up. We went there, got 100 pairs, shipped it, and then we waited. So we waited for like, this stuff came, and he sent the stuff back. So the next time when we came, it was like, yo, you don't have to shop anymore in the, in the, in the store. We go to the back. <laughs> so then we were shopping in the back. <laughs> That's a good story. Yeah, yeah, no, it's true. It's like we went to the back. It's, it's crazy. Back and then we shop more. Then we made deals like, you know, like one for two. Or we have one crazy pair, three. And it was simple because we used to go just to hit a Foot Locker and then just ship them. Because Foot Locker stuff or even... Batavia stuff or whatever, they didn't have that, uh, that uh, catalog in, in the States or even in Asia. There were different catalogs. So any fresh shoe that we liked over here, we sent over there and fresh shoes that they have over there, we bought it. But the funny part is also they had models that wasn't out in Holland. For instance, the Hurachi High Basketball, Hurachi like High Basketball, it was only in the States. Were like, but in the hood, they were going for like $30. So we came in, it was like, all right, you know what, uh, yo, this shoe, how many pairs do you have? They were all say, what size? I'm like, nah, how many pairs do you have? And they're like, yo, what size? I'm like, you don't get it. How many pairs do you have? <laughs> they're like, yo, huh? Okay, so then we bought 30, 40 pairs. It was laying out with boxes in the whole store. And it was crazy, it was crazy time. So then we had like money in our pockets and credit card, and it was crazy, and then we had to sh ship it. We did, in the beginning, we didn't know nothing about shipment. We just ship everything with the post. So we came with the box to the post office. The post office was like, what the fuck you doing? You know I mean? Yeah, it was crazy. And then we shipped everything with the post on the boat. It was our first shipment to Vapata on a boat. Three boxes were missing, the rest came. It's like a worldwide union. Yeah. It's like when Public Enemy said, it, you know, fear of a black planet. And with the black, they mean actually hip hop. Yeah. You know, so. We've been doing this for a dumbass long. It's dumb. It's, that's why we still have connections. You know, it's, you said you went to see, a, you went to London and see a Rodney P. That's old school. You met him a long time ago, probably, or whatever. Yeah. So we've been doing it, but we're doing it on a worldwide scale. That's why, you know, whenever you go to Japan or even Australia, there is guys that you already know or whatever. And now it's coming even closer because of the social media, it's closer. And faster. And faster, and it's like easy. That's how we met, just like boom, like, yo, and then, you know. Yo, let's go. Yeah, let's go. We can teach those kids, and it takes a long time, 
But we just started. Because hip hop is only what, 30 years? 40. 40 years. So that means 40 years we already is doing it. And it will keep on. It, 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 can't, it can't stop, won't stop. You yeah, know what I'm yeah, saying? That's right. yeah. <laughs> and that's the crazy part. People will say, yeah, but uh, uh, with this, 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 this. Yeah, but that's not on the your radio, whatever. They, but now it's so easy. You can go on the internet. There's so many stations you can choose from. You, you just have to choose. Das war sie also, die achte Folge von Back to Tape Unseen. Ich hoffe, ihr hattet viel Spaß. Und jetzt seid ihr dran. Sagt mir, was denkt ihr über das, was Edson gesagt hat? Sind diese Elemente für euch wichtig? Stehen sie für Hip-Hop-Kultur oder haben sie heute gar keine Bedeutung mehr? Schreibt es in die Kommentare und dann sehen wir uns wieder bei der nächsten Folge von Back to Tape Unseen.